And rejoining us is CNBC contributor Ron Insana. Ron, you were with us when this Fed statement crossed about a half an hour ago. The initial market reaction looked either disappointed or unbothered completely by it. Now the it might look a little bit better, but perhaps we're parsing this too finely here. Well, and, and it's hard to tell, Kelly. You know, I, I think in, in a strange sense, going back to, to my earlier days of covering stuff like this, if the Fed had come out after the close, they would have set up Monday as a day in which the market could rally. And this is really kind of tactical stuff from a, from a policy perspective. Whereas now, if the market sells off into the close after the Fed said something like that... They've already wasted that bullet. So they've wasted speak. that yeah. bullet, and there may be a belief that... Uh, and maybe rightly so, but that a rate cut is not going to cure this problem. If they had done it after the close, would that have just given people all weekend to make the same arguments that we were making in, <laughs> Possibly. in yeah, I mean, look, I mean, time about whether it was enough? It is a double-edged sword, and the Fed will get either praise or blame for, for just about anything they right. do at this juncture. Uh, but the fundamental issue is, is, again, still not monetary policy. It's, it's how deep is the economic impact in China globally and here in the United States? How much does it reduce corporate profits in the first two quarters of the year? And would uh, lower rates cushion any kind of blow you might see from the economic and, and business impact. Lee, you want to weigh in on that? Yeah, I do. Um, I've been doing this for 22 years. And last night, I really felt a change of heart that I hadn't felt since September 2008 when Lehman failed. Um, I'm generally a person who likes to come in early on corrections. We've been buyers of the S&P, a little bit of emerging markets, all week. But once I started looking at the information from the CDC, and also I've got a lot of clients, uh, we're out here in New Mexico, and I have clients that work at the, the labs that work in risk assessment and, you know, nuclear deterrence. And what I'm hearing on that side is that we're going to get some more information in the next couple of days from the CDC. But the bottom line is in order for this administration to get elected again, if that's their intention, they're going to have to control behavior. And when I hear that, I'm not concerned about death tolls. I'm not concerned about this going past summer. What I'm concerned about is that we're going to have school closures here. And if that starts to mute consumer spending, let's be honest. The U.S. consumer, it's what's keeping this global thing going. And if even if hours get cut, it's going to be a problem. So me, I am not usually buying. I'm usually buying today, and I'm not today. So let me ask you, even if we play out that, that kind of worst-case scenario, take it to its logical conclusion. So there's school closures. There's event cancellations. This lasts yes. for a period of some time. How are we talking about an actual recession? If so, how deep? And if so, how long? Because all of those pieces of speculation factor into what the market will do. You know, there's a big difference between, hey, this is going to be slower growth for a little while, and this mm -hmm. is going to be a sharper downturn, and, and the nature of, of a rebound that we might then get following it, whatever that rebound might look like. Oh, yeah. I mean, all, all this week, I've been, I've been spouting out a, a V-shaped recovery. Um, so I'm not... By the way, I am still a bull. So let's just make sure that that auto bull got told. But I, what I do think is I think the psychological toll is going to be much greater than necessarily economical. I don't think that we're going to be in a recession. I don't think we're going to see more than maybe 15, 20, maybe 25 percent profits not coming in as we expected. But if you just have several months where there's less activity, people are going or not going out to eat doing that, I think the psychological toll means that as we get closer to a 20% correction, which is only about another 100, 150 points from here, I think we go lower. More specifically, for all those technicians out there, we never got a retest of that December, Christmas Eve, 2018 low at 2350. I think that we're going to see a retest that would just move us back 14 months. But the bottom line is, I don't see a severe recession, but I see a very much more severe reaction over the coming months. And that's why this bull wants to reduce some exposure in Europe, in Japan. But I'm not selling my S&P, but I am selling some small cap value some other places. I'm doing silly things like buying some gold and short-term treasuries right now. I haven't done that since Lehman. And I think that's significant um, to have that type of change of heart just in you know, 24 Ron, hours. Ron, what, uh, I guess it's debatable what a rate cut would do for the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, what would it do for the, for the stock market? I'm and not sure. and for oil. For Again, oil. one would assume, and, and you know, for Asset all intents and purposes, Jay Powell just hinted that if necessary, the Fed will cut rates, yeah. and we've had virtually no response, meaningful response from the equity market. It's not like at the moment we're not looking at you know, a rally that is going to take us higher at the close. I, where, where I would part ways, I think, uh, with Lee is that, look, I mean, 2008 was a, a unique event insofar as it was a global systemic financial crisis. That's not what we have. Banks have capital. They have liquidity. This is not a money problem of sorts. It is a economic economic disruption. And yeah, I agree we might have a two, three, six month 
constraint on profits and growth. But we're in a year in which we're likely only to grow two or two and a half percent anyway. So it's not like you're going to get some five percent updraft on the other side. Not here, not in China, not in Germany, not in Italy, not in Japan, not in South Korea. Japan, in fact, even before coronavirus, had a six percent contraction in its economy mm. for putting on a national on sales, sales tax, tax yeah. when the, the economy wasn't that strong. So I think you get, you know, a, a longer period of slower growth. Um, even if you don't get a recession. Real quickly, what do yeah. you make? We are seeing the dollar slide a little bit since yeah, sure. spoke. Treasury yields are falling, and that's helping kind of just shore up a teensy bit the action in, in gold and in some of the yeah. commodities. I mean, is that more significant to you in, in the days ahead, do you think, or no? Well, I mean, I think gold has been um, hurt by forced selling uh, because, again, if there are margin calls and other levered players who are trying to raise cash, gold's been up a lot, so they may be taking profits there. Uh, you know, what strikes me more is a, a 114 print on the 10-year note. The note continues to fall in yield, even as the stock market yeah. tries to recover. So clearly, now they're pricing in a rate cut. Now they're pricing in slower growth, even more dramatically than they had earlier in the day. So, you know, th that's not my favorite message out of the markets right now, with bond yields continuing to fall. Uh, that tells me, and, and with oil dropping still, that there's demand destruction expected ahead. All right, Ron and Sana, Lee Munson, thank you both.